Now, months ago, I wanted to get this guy on. We were finally able to do it. I appreciate him coming on. Andrew uh, Lumen is executive director of the Tor Project, torproject.org. And uh, he's helped uh, with thousands of uh, volunteers to grow a successful company with a global reach. Uh, he's worked on projects uh, with Transition House, Google, National Science Foundation, U.S. Department of Defense, Reach Beyond Domestic Violence, the White House, and the U.S. State Department. He's a strong believer in individual rights, privacy, anonymity, and solving real-world problems, sometimes even uh, with technology. And uh, Lumen, L-E-W-M-A-N dot I-S is his website. And I wanted to get him on because you know, we've had a whole bunch of different experts on. William Benny, who was number four at the NSA, a director of a major program. We've had just countless other whistleblowers on. And a lot of them recommend uh, talking to uh, Andrew Lumen and, and, and talking about the TOR project. So first off, tell us about the TOR project, why folks that aren't tech savvy should want to know about this. And then does it make you get looked at more to use TOR? Or should you just go ahead and use it? And then there's the argument that, well, if I uh, have nothing to hide, then I shouldn't hide it. But that's like saying, why lower your blinds at night? Having nothing to hide from the sun, it, it, it'll wake you up unless you want to get up at 6 a.m. Or, uh, you know, what do you have against roosters? Nothing, but I don't want it to wake me up. I mean, it kind of becomes this thing of, why not put all the belongings you have on Facebook so robbers can rob you? If you don't, you have something to hide. So... What's the bottom line on all this? Thanks for having me, Alex. It's you bet. To be here. You bet. Um, so the bottom line is Tor puts you, the user, in control of your data. That we help you, not we make you anonymous by default. We'll encrypt your traffic as you go through the Tor network, and whenever you show up to any site you want to visit, you're anonymous. And then it's up to you to control what information you give them and how much you give them. Now, that will at least stop Microsoft, Google, Apple, uh, and Amazon and others, right, uh, from tracking everything you do. Because from what I've read, they're just as bad as the NSA. Collaborating with the NSA, whether through legal threats or just wanting to be with the inside boys, yes. So, uh, I mean, how secure is Tor? Uh, it's a fine question. Um, how secure it means there's some sort of quantitative measure or something. Um, we have worked with people who use Tor in life and death situations, and they're still alive. So we believe that Tor is fairly secure, fairly anonymous, and probably one of your best options out there. Break down how it works for people, because I guess you're part of one of the developers of it. So Tor is you download Tor Browser. Go to torbrowser.org, or you get however you get your software from wherever. Go to Tor Browser, start it up, and what it does is behind the scenes, it connects to a series of three relays around the world. Um, so we're sitting here, say we're here in Boston. My first relay could be in Japan. My second relay can be in Argentina. My third relay could be in Sweden. So then I go browse to, you know, whatever, infowars.com. Um, as far as Infowars knows, I came from Sweden. They have no idea that I'm sitting here in Boston, and you would have to track my traffic around the world to see who I am and where I, where I exist in the world. What percentage of people do you think out there are using stuff like Tor? Uh, unfortunately, a small percentage. Um, we've had 150 million downloads of the software in the past year since the Snowden revelations over the past, you know, since last summer. Um, and that's still tiny compared to the 3 billion people online. However, people are beginning to notice it. People are beginning to realize, you know, what's privacy? What is the NSA doing? What is GCHQ doing? Um, and how can I protect myself at any level, even if it's just from, you know, some creep in a coffee shop sniffing the Wi-Fi? Well, that's another reason to protect your data because there's thieves and bad hackers out there, right? Right. And in some cases, it may be your internet service provider. Um, there have, we've gotten messages from all over the world that people have sent us screenshots of ads on apple.com or google.com. And if you look at them, they're these big, huge, ugly banner ads um, that neither Apple nor Google actually put on their home pages. And that's because the internet service provider is watching traffic and injecting the ads into their traffic as they're you know, doing their things online. Um, so 
encrypting your traffic using Tor is one way to stop that. And the other, you know, simple thing, you travel, you go to a hotel, do you trust everyone at the hotel with all your traffic, all your personal details, your chats, your pictures, everything? Your passcodes? Uh, yep, exactly. Um, and there are plenty of companies out there who would love to get your email address, whether you gave it to them or not, and then you know sign you up for all sorts of lists, and you go from there. Well, if government and industry from the beginning had promoted security and a free system, a free state, we wouldn't be having this disaster. I'm no tech guru like you, but I, I just see nothing but a house of horrors coming in the future as spying is ubiquitous. Everything's got back doors. Uh, the young people just are wide open with their info. Uh, it's being exploited by governments, corporations, and, and, and grassroots criminals. Uh, it's just why do you think governments in the system, or, or, or maybe you disagree, have, have promoted, I mean, why are they promoting Wi-Fi instead of you know, grounded cables? Why are they going with a system so wide open? Uh, in some degrees, it's just about control. That, you know, they... People get into power and they want control over others. And how do they do that? Well, if they have an asymmetry of information where they have more information about you and they think they can predict you and they think they know everything about you while you know little about them, um, that's probably the core of the problem, that more, much more transparency. And I know you're, you mentioned whistleblowers earlier. Um, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation unless Edward Snowden, and you know, I've spent time talking to William Binney face to face um, and Drake and others and you know their their efforts to sort of force transparency on power structures has made people wake up and start realizing what's going on they are such heroes in fact I want to give you the floor because you're the expert on this get into the NSA get into uh, the attack on whistleblowers bipartisan it, it means classical totalitarianism that's what Benny called to the Guardian but, I mean, you've got the floor to talk to the audience about things you think are important instead of me just throwing questions out here. You're happy to ask questions. Um, What's the, most important for folks to know right now? Uh, the Internet is a network. Networks are designed to be recorded and watched every, at every single point. Um, you know, it's not just the 1% the of the tech people who sort of understand how networks work. Um, as a former network engineer myself, one of the things I was hired to do was to watch the network, look for attacks, figure out who's doing what. Um, and it's trivially easy if you control the network. If you think of the internet as just a larger network, which it is, um, it becomes easier. You know, with enough money, you can do anything. Um, I think what's started to happen have been, you know, the, the press has started to wake up to realize what the NSA and GCHQ and, you know, frankly, we've heard that the FSB in Russia and the Chinese, I think it's MSS, are the equivalent agencies, can do with the Internet and watch everything. Um, what that results in is that journalists used to have to go to court and get, you know, subpoenaed, get hauled to the court to say, give us your sources. We want to know who leaked the data about whatever. Now the government will still do that just to harass them. But at the same time says, we actually have all your data because we've been spying on you for years. We know who your source is. Um, and we've already taken care of them, you know, however we deem necessary. In most of the Western world, that's a fine chilling effect. But we've worked with journalists who are working against corrupt intelligence agencies, far more corrupt than the NSA, um, who are in with human trafficking cartels, drug cartels, this is how they fund themselves. That's right. Uh, and, you know, I, I won't name a specific region, but, you know, there are plenty of regions where you can imagine that human trafficking and drug cartels rule the government. Mexico, Middle East, Central uh, Asia. Sure. So uh, journalists in that situation, you know, wind up dead. And, and for those who don't know, our government hands that over to Jordan or to Pakistan or to whoever. I mean, this is this is beyond the lives of others and other examples of East German Stasi. This is so evil. And it's being done for political control. They're not even using this illegally, quote, on bad guys. They, they are using it against journalists. I mean, as you know, they tried to put William Benny in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and Drake. Um, I've talked to them both, and they're both have told me you know, the, the, the nightmares they've lived through um, and what they're 
you know, their sort of attitude is funny because their attitude has been that, you know, I just don't use computers anymore because there's nothing safe I can do on them. Um, well, yeah, they'll just use the computers to set you up. That's a whole other issue with these being two-way is you can't believe anything. And then with parallel construction, sneak and peeks, I mean, the entire judiciary system, in my view, is illegitimate now. We'll be right back. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. The feds are trying to ban your right to own body armor. It is crucial to purchase your body armor before it is too late and another one of your rights are taken away. KD Armor has the most affordable level 3 armor on the market today. KD Armor withstands up to 7.62 NATO rounds. Don't have your own body armor yet? Hurry before it's too late. Order yours at KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I Armor.com. Come and take it. Get some. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a gluten free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com. Keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist light clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. The Associated Press last week and then the big federation of journalists this week sent letters to Obama saying please stop having Holder attack the press. Well, Holder has stepped down. Was it a giant piece of corruption that was coming out that was too embarrassing or has he outlived his usefulness? Is he going to cash in? With a golden parachute, your call's coming up in the next segment. Uh, Andrew, 
Uh, Lumen is our guest. The website is torproject.org. And it's time to start thinking about not just how we're being tracked, but radiation dangers, microwave radiation, cell phones. To have a discussion about all these computers and all these phones and it has a lot of great uses, but it's also changing our civilization and not for the better because all these Trojan horses are involved. Andrew, uh, talking to Drake and talking to uh, Benny and others, where they've tried to indict them, tried to set them up. They have gone after other whistleblowers. I mean, you're supposed to be protected when you're exposing a crime. And look at how Snowden has had to flee and been demonized when they were lying before saying none of this was going on. Why aren't they getting in trouble for committing the crimes? I, I don't know. It's a fine question. I think the you know, public needs to stand up and figure out what's going on and get people to... There are people that care in the government. I've met them. You know, they're they call them future whistleblowers, call them whatever. Um, they do think this is a way out of control. That's uh, what's crazy is people in the federal government I meet are more awake than the general public. Right, and that they're worried because you know I had a conversation with uh, an agent in DHS, and he said at some point I'm going to retire, and I don't do not want to retire into this world. Um, and he goes, I'm thinking about leaving the U.S. too. And I was like, wait, you're a federal agent. You spent your entire life doing this, and this is your concern. He's like, right, like, what's going on here? He's like, what's happening? You know, they're going to use all the power you give them, and then they're going to keep using power even if you don't give it to them until they're slapped down saying, you know, don't do that. That's bad. Exactly. And people, just like you couldn't get organic food 20 years ago, now it's displacing all the garbage at the shopping market, at the... Um at the grocery store, we voted with our dollars and it changed the paradigm. If we all start going and using Tor, if we all start, you know, getting rid of our cell phones or not taking them with us all the time or turning them off, if we all start researching the system, we could really change the paradigm. Right. I think that you look at where technology was 14, 20 years ago. Um, and how much improvements it's made and how much corporations have improved security over time. Because, you know, they have these incentives of it affects our revenues, it affects our company. Um, people are starting to starting to get that power and starting to understand why, why a company would do that and why they want personal security and why they want, you know, a phone that's secure and things like that. So I think it's, it's going to take time, but it's coming, you know, ask Look at what teenagers use today. You know, I do a, do a lot of work with teenagers, and they tell me the reason they choose, you know, various apps like Whisper and Snapchat and Secret and whatever else they use um, are because they advertise as secure, ephemeral things so that it's not on some permanent record. And, you know, you do dumb things as a teenager, which is when you're supposed to be doing it, and it comes and goes away. That's right. What do you think of Apple's new uh, claims that they're doing some things that make it harder for illegal surveillance to take place? I think it's a step in the right direction. I think that, you know, any company who wants to publicly come out and say they are paying attention to privacy, um, it may or may not have been related to the celebrity photo leaks that suddenly forced their hand. Um, but, you know, there'll be more just like this. I mean, just look at Home Depot and Target have had two of the largest credit card breaches ever. And maybe now, you know, after their stock or their revenues or something, they get hit. You know what Those I like? Cards. They don't get in my face now at Barnes & Noble and Target demanding I get one of their smart cards now. They, they've actually shut up about it because obviously everybody's blowing up at them saying, no, I don't want my data stolen. Right. And that, that concept right there has been years in the making and when the average person can say what are you doing with my data you know where do you store it how do you store it that's a far far better conversation than we've ever had in the past well andrew i hope you'll come back with us in the future uh it's lumen.is l-e-w-m-a-n.is and torproject.org look i'm not a techie but i'm learning slowly how it all works trying to understand it, interviewing all the top experts here on a weekly basis, and make a few easy decisions out there and protect yourself and your family. It's like locking your door at night. It's not that you're living in fear. It's just that that's an added measure of protection to lock your door at night. It's very simple, and having Internet security and encoding what you're doing
thing. Using Tor is just another level of that. I think it's a great idea. Andrew, thanks for the time. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Wow, that's a big dog in the whole uh, free movement on the Internet. Andrew Lumen, Executive Director of the Tor Project. I'm Alex Jones. Your calls are three minutes away. We're going right to you. We're on the march.